Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday morning mountain weather update. We've got three different storms to talk about, but first I want to go to some live cameras because it is crystal clear this morning across Colorado. This is a view from Loveland Ski Area. Um, what a view with the, the glow on the eastern horizon. They had a little bit of natural snow. I think it was around 10 inches, um, but they're also making snow and they're going to try to open a couple of runs. The, the note that came through yesterday from uh, Loveland and my friend Dustin up there, um, you can see them, they're blowing snow here off Chet's Dream. They're going to try to open in late October, early November, somewhere in there, so that's the range. Um, you might recall that yesterday was opening day for Wolf Creek down in southern Colorado, but they had twice as much snow um, as pretty much everybody else in the central and northern mountains. So um, they're off to a little better start with natural snow. I want to take you to Utah. I mean, it is just so clear up there. This is the view on Mount Baldy up towards Mount Baldy. Um, and you can see there's still some snow left over from the last storm, but it is just so clear. Now, the first of three storms, the first one comes through tonight, tomorrow morning as a windy clipper for uh, U northern Utah, central to northern mountains of Colorado. The snow with it is going to be light. It's going to stay up, I think, in the parts of, mainly up in the parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. So we'll look at that coming up. In fact, I want to give you the lay of the land here on the, uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. So oranges and reds are your drier air loft. Let me point out where our clipper is. And here it is right here. You can almost see a little bit of uh, action, a little bit of moisture, higher humidity out ahead of it. So that's the one that's going to track quickly through um, parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and then quickly exit. But what it will do is it'll have a little bit of snow with it and wind, of course, but the big wind will be uh, in dry conditions will be down here in northern Utah, central to northern mountains of Colorado. I don't think you're going to see much uh, snow as this thing blows through those areas. Um, and then there is a pretty tight storm system behind it, also one up here towards the Gulf of Alaska. These two will combine to become our October 28, 29, 30 storm system for the Intermountain West, Pacific Northwest, Intermountain West. And then there's even another storm behind that. So that's why I'm saying we're going to be talking about three different storm systems in this update. In fact, here are my bullet points this morning. So Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, we've got that windy clipper with a little bit of snow reserved for Idaho, Wyoming, Montana coming through tonight, tomorrow morning. Then the main storm comes in 1028 through 1030, snow for the Inner Mountain. And there's another one. I alluded to this yesterday that we really need to keep an open mind that the, potentially there's another storm that'll ride in behind it. And indeed there is. Um, between Halloween and 11-1. So we'll look at the snow forecast that goes all the way out to 11-1 in this, this update here this morning. I want to show you the time height forecast for humidity in the atmosphere. This is Bear Lake, Colorado. If you've ever been there, very popular place in Rocky Mountain National Park, between nine and 10,000 feet um, in the northern mountains. But you can read um, the timeline at the bottom from right to left. This is humidity through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere if you were to slice it. It's all dry air for the next 72 hours. That's what the yellow-orange color represents. It's all dry air. But what you see within that, the interplay, is a tightening of the pressure gradient, a folding right there. You can kind of see it. And the wind barbs, there's some full flags on those of 50 knots or more coming in tonight, tomorrow morning. So very windy in the central and northern mountains of Colorado tonight, tomorrow. And even some wind behind it because this kind of opens the door just a touch. And when the next storm system comes in, 1028, 1029, 1030, it's going to bring its own jet support with it. So the wind will come back with that, and that opens the door for that other storm system. So just an interesting chart. You can kind of see a lot of different variables in one right there. Let me take you into that windy forecast in Colorado for uh, late tonight, tomorrow. This is at noon on Thursday, looking at 40 to 60, maybe 70 mile an hour wind gusts. Anywhere in the tan color is 50 plus. So that's over the Front Range High Peaks, Long's Peak, Indian Peak, um, Cameron Pass, Bear Lake, all those areas, Berthoud Pass. So that's a windy scenario um, for the Intermountain. Okay, let me show you the jet stream forecast. Close of business today. Notice a little bit of a dip in the jet. That's our clipper, a little jet streak on the, the bottom um, side of that, uh, that low. There it moves through. Now we refocus and we watch because here comes our storm system and our trough, our dip in the jet. Here it comes, 1028, 1029. And you can see it moving through uh, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. That's good support. And then it moves through, and here comes the second push, the second trough coming south, 1030, 1031 into 111 right here. You can see the dip rolling into um, the Intermountain West. So if we put some precip 
and cloud cover on top of all of this. Here is your forecast radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, you can see the narrow area of rain and snow with our clipper and, of course, wind moving into Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Here we are by tomorrow morning, and then it's gone. And then it's gone. So here comes our, our first of two additional storm systems into the Pacific Northwest BC with some good precip up there. And then it drops down to the inner mountain. This is 1028 at 5.30 in the afternoon, evening. Um, you've got snow from B.C. to Pacific Northwest to Montana, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, and moving into Colorado. Look at that. And that moves through and kind of gets hung up and might actually cut off or turn into a, a front-range type of uh, low pressure uh, that spins up on Wednesday, 1030. So that could enhance some of the snow over the top of the front-range high peaks of Colorado and down in southern Colorado, depending on exactly where this thing sets up. And then it moves out, but that's not it, because here comes the next storm riding its coattails, and this one's got more cold air. It's all snow on this. It is 98% snow on this, so this one would have some additional snow accumulation and cold air with it. So let's talk snow accumulation. Here are my numbers just today through tomorrow, so the next 24 hours roughly. Um, this has only got about an inch, maybe two inches over the high peaks of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, especially the Tetons and the Wind Rivers uh, and wind as well. Now here's the key period. This is 1025 through 111. This is very promising. Um, it does account for the, the initial storm in most of the second storm as well. Not all of the second, but at least the initial part. So you're looking at this. So in other words, the snow doesn't all come at one time, but we've got good numbers, especially in the central to northern mountains of Colorado, banked right up against the front range. Assuming that low spins up in eastern Colorado, we could be looking at a foot in some of those areas. Uh, we could be looking at a foot. Anywhere in purple here is over is a foot or more, and that could be right over the Tetons, Yellowstone, close to Big Sky, down over the Wind Rivers of Wyoming. In uh, Utah, anywhere from four to eight inches, those numbers could certainly fluctuate and go up. Um, looking at some good numbers for the Pacific Northwest, all my numbers have gone up uh, for the Cascades and the high volcanoes. Could be looking at one to two feet of accumulation through a lot of Washington and Oregon on the highest uh, elevations. Good stuff for parts of B.C. with two or maybe even three storm systems tracking through that area. Again, anywhere in that, that pink color is a foot or more. And pretty decent numbers through Idaho and northwest Montana. I don't have much, though, in this time period for California, unfortunately. What you're seeing here really mirrors that La Nina light pattern I'm expecting for a lot of this, uh, this winter with everything coming out of the Pacific Northwest and BC and kind of tracking down, um, sinking south from that point on. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this morning mountain weather update on this Wednesday. Take care and thank you for tuning in here.